Good morning, church. <laughs> Please rise in spirit or body for the call to worship, which hear from the gospel according to Mark, how our Lord Jesus entered Jerusalem. This is from Mark 11, verses 1 through 11. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, he sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and we'll send it back here immediately. They went away, found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who goes in the name of the Lord. Please remain standing for our opening hymn, which if anybody speaks Spanish, can you help me? Thank you. Uh, and join the palm parade if you so like, with or without a palm. There's a palm parade. Let us pray together with one voice. Almighty God, on this day your Son, Jesus Christ, entered the holy city of Jerusalem and was proclaimed King by those who spread their garments and palm branches along his way. Let those branches be for us 
signs of his victory, and grant that he who bear them in his name may ever hail him as our Lord and follow him in the way that leads to eternal life. In his name we pray. Amen. Good morning, St. John. Hosanna! Welcome to worship on this Palm Sunday. I am so grateful to be here with each and every one of you. I encourage you to take just a moment and fill out a Connect card. You can find those in the seat back pockets or tear it off of your bulletin or just point your phone at the QR code. Welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online. You too can fill out a digital Connect card by simply scanning that QR code or visiting stjohnanchorage.org slash Connect card. Let us know that you are here in worship with us today. You'll have a chance a little bit later in the service to bring those Connect cards forward and drop them in the offering plates. Let's take a moment and remember why it is that we gather here in the first place. The mission of St. John United Methodist Church is to grow disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world and to be a welcoming family joyfully sharing God's life. Just a friendly reminder to remember to wear your name tag so other folks know who you are. It helps new persons feel more welcome and invited. If you don't know where your name tag is or you can't find it on one of the four different boards that we keep name tags on, just write that on the Connect card. We'd be happy to print up a new one for you and set it out on the welcome table. If you've requested one recently, that's where you can find it, is sitting on the welcome table. A uh, big thank you to all of you who have made generous donations to Spring Hill Elementary School. We are able to supply a whole bunch of gift cards so that every family who is low income is going to be able to experience and enjoy an Easter meal. Thank you to your generosity. And then also we're going to send kids to sixth grade camp again this year. Um, they, the sixth graders get to go do a special thing. This is going to be the last year they get to do this. Because next year, sixth graders won't be in elementary school anymore. They're all bumping up to middle school within the Anchorage School District. So this is sort of a, a, a final last hurrah of a way that we get to sponsor Spring Hill. So thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity in supporting those students. Uh, there'll be more announcements a little bit later in worship. For now, let's take a big breath. Let it out. Center ourselves for this time of worship and celebration together. is Miss Leah and I get to work with children and families at St. John this spring uh, and got to be in part of the Palm Parade which is one of my favorite days of the year. Um, I brought this bag with me today to talk about faith because faith is hard to get our minds around so I thought I'd bring some ideas. What is in here? What's this, guys? A mask. A mask. Yeah. Superhero mask. Superhero mask. What do you feel when you wear a mask, like a superhero mask? Mysterious. Mysterious. What else? Like a superhero. Like a superhero. What does a superhero feel like? Strong. Nervous. Nervous sometimes if they're doing a big job. Yeah. Yeah. Proud. Proud. Definitely. Confident. Confident. Mm -hmm. Faithful and under pressure. 
faithful under pressure. Superheroes have a big job and they feel strong. So I brought some other things that help me feel strong. This is a note that's, oh my, how old do you think this note is? Really old. I got this from a friend before my last cross country race in college, so this is really old. <laughs> but it helped me feel strong. What's this? Binoculars, and what do they do? They make things that are really far away close up unless you put them on backwards. Yep, so they do more than one thing. Yeah, binoculars can do that. What else do they do? If you put them on backwards, things are going to be even farther away. Yeah, yeah, but they're pretty powerful. They're pretty strong. They're another strong thing. What's this? Yeah, yeah. And um, doctors, I think, that's another thing I think uh, nurses um, build strength in us. What's this? Snacks. Snacks. Very important for strength, right? Oh, gosh. Guys, that is all that is in my bag. But there's something more important that I couldn't show you from a bag. What else gives us strength? Ah. Ah. Yeah. What do you think? So? Jesus. Yeah, work together to give us strength. So how do we get strong from God? That's Sophie, what do you think? He's powerful enough to make us get strength. Yeah, yeah. He believes in us. Believes in us? And then we, yeah, Allie. And he's nice to us. So that belief can give us strength. And it's kind of backward from superhero. Although Andrew pointed out that superheroes could feel nervous too, and that we have to ask God for the strength. So will you guys pray with me? Okay. Repeat after me. After me. Good job. Dear God, Dear God you, can you can do more than we can understand. Please help us strengthen our faith, so that we trust your hand. Amen. Okay. Um, kindergarten and younger can go to Sacred Circle uh, today, and rest of us, you're always welcome to stay with your families.
The scripture reading today is, is continuing from what the call to worship was. That was Mark 11, 1 through 11. This is Mark 11, 12 through 24. And just going back to the other one that we read, I was curious about how to say Beth Phage, and I also found out what it meant. And that's where they got the colt from. That is called, that means the house of unripe figs. Yes, and Bethany, which is right next door, is where this next um, reading picks up, and that means house of figs. So we have the unripe and the figs, and you'll understand why when I read this. Um, so this is from 12 to 24 out of Mark. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree in leaf, he went to see whether perhaps he would find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for it was not the season for figs. He said to it, may no one ever eat fruit from you again. And his disciples heard it. Then they came to Jerusalem, and he entered the temple and began to drive out those who were selling and those who were buying in the temple. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the seats of those who sold the doves. He would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. And when the chief priests and scribes heard it, they kept looking for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. When evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city. In the morning, as they passed by, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Jesus answered them, have faith in God. Truly, I tell you, if you say to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, and if you do not doubt in your heart, but believe that what you say will come to pass, it will be done for you. So I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it, and it will be yours. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Joan. Good morning, St. John. My name is Autumn Kruger. I'm one of your pastors. And on March 13th and 14th, there were some historical things that happened with the Iditarod. Dallas Seeley came in and received the sixth championship record setting. No other musher had done that. But the one I'm more excited about is that there were four women that finished in the top 10 which is the most women that have ever finished in the top 10. These women was Paige Drobny, who arrived in fifth, Millie Porcel in seventh, Amanda Otto in eighth, and Jesse Royer in 10th. But a lot happened between, in those last hours of it, before they crossed the finish line. In fact, veteran musher Pete Kaiser said he's rarely been rattled on the trail, but this time, Pete, Jesse, and Amanda ran into some into the notorious blowhole area of the race's final stretch, and it turned to be a harrowing time that Pete had never experienced before. He said, I've been through a lot of high winds that usually only last 10 to 15 minutes. There's a break, and then you hit another wall. This one was steady for an hour and a half to two hours there were some really gnarly spots. So much so that Amanda was blown off the trail 20 feet. And Pete stopped to help her get back on the trail. And the two of them ran side by side for the next 45 minutes with the whipping wind, lowered visibility to almost zero, and temperatures in the negative double digits. The trail markers had kind of been destroyed. Jesse Royer said she wasn't worried until she got to a spot where she couldn't identify any of the trail markers. She stopped her team to check things out. She could no longer see her team in front of her. In fact, her hand, a foot out in front of her face, she couldn't see. 
So, trying to continue on, she ended up on some sea ice. She saw Pete's light on the trail, though, as a place for her to start heading towards where she knew someone else might know where they are, and if not, we might be together. When she reached Pete, though, she also joined in with Amanda, and so there were three, and they grouped together until the blowing snow stopped, and the race could be back on, a little bit safer. And each one of them finished in Nome no more than 20 minutes different from the other. These mushers had confidence in their dogs, in their own ability, in their care for one another. This kind of confidence is one the temple leaders lost with Jesus due to their actions. But it's a confidence that Jesus hopes we have in God. Now our text today picks up with Jesus and the disciples on their way to Jerusalem when they come upon a fig tree. W.M. Christine wrote in The Barren Fig Tree that the time of the year was the first days of April, something we're almost to. The facts connected with the fig tree are these. Toward the end of March, the leaves begin to appear, and in about a week, the foliage coating is complete. Coincident with this, there appears quite a crop of small little knobs, not the real figs, but kind of an early forerunner. They grow to the size of green almonds and are commonly eaten by peasants and just those passing by who are hungry. When they come to their own maturity, they just drop off to the ground. These things are called takwash. And their appearance is a predecessor of the fully formed fig that is to come. And so, The time for figs had not yet come yet, but it appears as if there's leaves all over this plant, but not any tekwash. This is a sign that there would be no figs on this tree. Since Jesus found nothing but leaves, he knew it was an absolutely hopeless, fruitless fig tree. And he said as much to the disciples. An absolutely hopeless, fruitless fig tree fig tree. And this is our introduction to us coming up to the temple with Jesus and the disciples. And when Jesus enters, he immediately began to drive out those who were buying, flipping tables of the money changers and the seats of those who were selling doves. Now, a few weeks ago, Pastor Andy talked about these doves. Who would buy these doves? The poor people. Exactly. And it was their last chance to purchase a sacrificial offering that they could bring with their last few coins. But even these coins, they had to exchange them because most of these coins had the image of pagan gods and the emperor on them. It was just one more step that they had to take and one more barrier for them in reaching the house of God, for reaching the house of prayer. This was evidence to Jesus of an absolutely hopeless and fruitless fig tree. Now, Jesus flipping the tables only affected a small area in the huge temple compound. So flipping the tables wasn't the point, although we like the imagery. We can connect with that. But, but what matters more is what he said afterwards. Is it not written, my house shall be called a house of prayer for all the nations? but you have made it a den of robbers. And when the religious leaders heard this, they kept looking for ways to kill him. Jesus had pointed out the evidence of barrenness and fruitlessness in their temple worship. The coin exchange, the selling of the doves, created barriers for people to come to the house of prayer for all nations. They knew that they were absolutely hopeless, fruitless fig trees. When evening came, Jesus and the disciples departed from the temple. And we assume that they found some place to lay down and sleep because morning came and we meet back up with them as they pass by the fig tree again. But this time, Peter notices that it's withered. Now, this immediately following what happened in the temple suggests the temple will suffer a similar fate to that of the fig tree as it no longer fulfills the purpose God had intended. Like the fig tree who would produce no figs, the temple is no longer a house of prayer for all nations. 
Now, the temple itself was not the problem here. The problem is the chief priests and scribes running it. They understand the implications of Jesus' words, that Jesus does not attack them, attack the temple directly, but their specific way of running it, their teachings, their leadership. Lamar Williamson writes, by combining these two stories of the fig tree in the temple, Jesus not only attacks the use of a place of prayer for commercial purposes, but also denounces national and religious exclusivism. Jesus is wholly frustrated and disappointed by what he has witnessed in the temple, an absolutely hopeless and fruitless fig tree. Now, when Peter points out this withered fig tree, Jesus responds to the disciples by saying, have faith in God. And we hear all these famous notions that faith can move mountains, and whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you will receive it, and you will. These two teachings on prayer have caused a lot of heartache and frustration for many people. Anyone here experience any heartache or frustration from not being able to move mountains and unanswered prayers? Yeah. People believed that they had faith enough to move mountains, faith enough to ask for whatever, but neither happened. You see, moving mountains is figurative here. Literally moving a mountain is going to take some significant earth-moving equipment, right? Yeah. It's, it was understood as hyperbole that this was not realistic, but to explain the amount of power that goes with this kind of prayer. This text speaks of faith in God as a channel for how we open our lives to the power of God. Faith is understood to mean an absence of doubt. That if you have faith in God, if you have an absence of doubt in God, you can move mountains. You can ask for anything. And so Jesus urges the disciples to believe, to pray, and to forgive, so that the power of God might work through them in the way the house of prayer for all nations was supposed to work. The earliest church remembered these sayings, to believe, to pray, and to forgive, because they were basic to the creation and maintenance of a Christian community. And they still are. Our text today ends with instructions for prayer. Instructions for confidence in prayer. But it's nearly impossible to be confident in God when you also doubt God. And the New Interpreter's Bible commentary showed that the early Christians understood this too and were struggling with it. And so they introduced some guidelines to help pray confidently in the midst of that doubt individually and communally. They said, prayer must be in the name of Jesus. It must reflect that Jesus' word abides in the person saying it. God will grant the request of Christians united in prayer. Prayer must come from an undivided heart. And a general understanding that Christians will not ask for things that merely respond to individual desires but will only ask in situations of real need, where human power alone cannot solve the situation. Now, Amanda, Jesse, and Pete worked together in the spirit of the Iditarod. They each had confidence in their team. They believed in them. They banded together as needed and struck out on their own when the race was on and it was safe again. And they celebrated their finishes, their fruitfulness together. These three put aside their own desires to win and helped each other. They had done all of the work ahead of time to have all of the confidence in their team, in themselves, in their bodies. And yet they leaned on each other when their confidence waned. And there was no malice to even forgive after they had all finished. These are our lessons, too, that to spend time with God, alone and together, we do that so that when doubt erupts, we can have confidence in God, so that we have a community to turn to who can unite in prayer with us. We set aside our own desires for the sake of others, so that we all may thrive 
and bear good fruit. And the last one, to forgive, is actually verse 25, which we didn't get to today, but it is a part of these three. It's to forgive. So that we have an undivided heart when we do turn to God. Now, making time for God every day builds a foundation of faith, hope, and love that is absolutely critical for our moments when we doubt. During Lent, I have been working my way through the book, Dynamite Prayer, tending to my own prayer life. The closing chapter of the book was about sustenance, that which is required for us to thrive, what is required for us to bear the fruit God has intended for us. Sustenance is found in community. It's found in serving others. It's found in individual relationship with God. And so I prayed the final breakthrough prayer in there this week. God, demolish my tendency to ignore your living presence in every detail of my life. And fill me anew with an attitude of welcome and openness of your spirit of power. Amen. An attitude of welcome and openness to the power of God. I prayed this so that I might be a house of prayer, so that God's power might work through me. This is my prayer for our community of faith. That God might do the same with us. That there might be a house of prayer inside each one of you. That God's power might flow through us so that we might bear the fruit that God has intended for us to bear. So if you share in this prayer with me for our community of faith to bear fruit, to have God's power work through us, I invite you to join me in this prayer. God, demolish our tendency to ignore your living presence in every detail of our lives and fill us anew with an attitude of welcome and openness to your spirit of power and strength. Rid the doubt and selfishness that withers us and grant us sustenance to bear your fruit. Amen and amen.
to invite Lizzie to bring her family forward. The sacrament of baptism is one of the single greatest joys that pastors get to participate in. But one of the things that makes the joy even more special is getting to baptize the kids of the kids that I used to be a part of in youth group so many years ago. It is a joy to get to do this with you all today. Thank you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit, and all of this is God's gift offered to us without price. So Jake and Casey, I ask you on behalf of the whole church, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. I do. do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? I do. do you confess Jesus Christ as Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as Lord in union with the church, which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture Elizabeth in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example she may be guided to accept God's grace for herself, to profess her faith openly, and to lead a Christian life? My friends, do you, as Christ's body of the church, both reaffirm your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? Will you do all within your power to include Elizabeth and her parents now before you in your care? With God's help, we will proclaim the good news and live according to the example of us. We will surround Elizabeth with a community of love and forgiveness that she may grow in her trust of God and be found faithful for this us. We will pray for Elizabeth that she may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Time and again throughout the scriptures, God saves God's people through the waters. Noah and the flood, the people and the Red Sea, Jesus and the waters of the womb. Time and again, God blesses us and saves us through water. Elizabeth Ann, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. Amen. Amen. My friends, will you welcome our newest and beloved member, Elizabeth Ann Perry. This is a copy of the baptismal certificate. This is a bowl that was created for you by Mindy. Your name is printed in there. This is for you to keep. And also St. John and the year. God bless you. This is often a time that I will parade around the sanctuary with a kid. However, 
<laughs> Elizabeth is feeling a little more connected with mom today, and so we're not going to do that today. But it is a blessing and an honor to welcome you in Christ's love, Elizabeth. And we will continue to pray God's blessing upon you and on your parents and on your parents' parents and on your whole family. God bless you. Okay, that's my joy for the day. Thank you, God. Other joys? Oh, wow. Well. Service High School, we got third in the state basketball championship. The joy for service, getting third and, and state for basketball. Thank yes. you, God. Hallelujah. Hugh is home for college. Hugh is home for college. Yay! Thank you, God. Are you starting to talk like a Minnesotan yet? Yeah, sure, you betcha. Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Abigail. The joy of your dad's birthday? How old is he? 48. <laughs> Thank you, God. Hallelujah. The joy of Nick coming home and a late celebration of Carla's 60th birthday. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, God. So. A new puppy. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Wow, man, we've got all the birthdays this week. Turn in 40 this week. Happy birthday, David. Thank you, God. It was an awesome Lent event yesterday. Thank you to all the volunteers who helped make it happen, all the kids who showed up, and uh, all the Easter eggs that were found, and for all the parents who had sugar crashes sometime last night. Thank you, God. Joy for Tristan being home for a week. Thank you, God. Um, our youngest is in Greece right now. He's having a wonderful time. So. Hope is in Greece having a great time. Thank you, God. Yeah, the joy this week of the announcement that Pastor Nico will be serving as the pastor of Turnigan United Methodist Church just across town beginning July 1st. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Happy birthday, Aaron. Thank you, God. For the joy of reconnecting with a friend in ministry and uh, doing great things with our life, we say thank you, God. Amen. And for Jeremy, who blesses this church in so many ways, I did not realize you had done the 40K. You are my hero for the week. Thank you, God. Amen. How about concerns? Things. Well, oh. For the joy of Mindy's glass class and being able to spend time together with him. Thank you, God. Okay, now concerns. Things weighing on our hearts. Um, as always, 
families, prayers for our military and first responders and their families who make a huge sacrifice for all of us, um, and for our houseless and um, food insecure residents. For our, our military, our first responders, all who serve in uniform, for their families and the sacrifices that they make on our behalf. And then also for our neighbors who are experiencing either food insecurity, homelessness, or both. We say God to your love. Trust this birth. Where is your Barbara, who has now got the cold and passing around town? Prayers for Barbara's healing with the cold and... We say, God, to your love, we trust this prayer. Ham. Prayers from the brothers and sisters around the world who are living in war zones and suffering. We pray for our siblings around the world who are living in war zones and who are suffering. God, to your love, we trust this prayer. We pray for Janet and for all who loved Peter in his sudden and unexpected passing this week. God, to your love. Jesus. Oh, first for John's brother who's dealing with some cancer issues, but also dementia and lots of decisions to be made in his treatment plan. Prayers for John's brother dealing with dementia, cancer, and other health concerns. God, to your love. Jesus. Mary Alice. For her daughter's mother-in-law, Diane, uh, diagnosed with cancer this week and returned with cancer. And then also for our friend Betsy, who's been a lot of support from uh, the family that's gathered here on Tuesday. We, pr so, we pray for Diane with cancer returning, and we pray for Betsy, whose family is gathering after many weeks of ICU after falling and striking her head. God, to your love. We trust this prayer. For our children, youth, and all who struggle with mental health, we say God to your love. We trust this prayer. I have a few moments of silent prayer before I turn and wrap us up with a pastoral prayer. Oh, Menti, thank you. My apologies to the folks worshiping online. Peace, please, peace. Thanks for the amazingly full life of Rosie Porter who passed away last week. We pray for healing for Lyman, Ruthie, and Orlo. Prayers for those grieving the loss of a loved one. Blessed to be part of this congregation. Joy for improvement to my sister's back pain that's gone on for two years. Joy for movement on the adoption path that we are on. Nicole's 36th birthday. Praise for a great family game night this week. Prayers for Scott and Jackie who are both battling cancer. Prayers for missing my dad. Prayers for our leaders as they work on a new plan for funding our schools. Father-in-law proceeding with experimental dementia treatment this week. And prayers for a grandmother as her dementia continues to deteriorate and for a dad as he tries to assist her despite her stubborn protests. Hosanna. Hosanna, hey Zanna, Zanna, Zanna Ho. Today is supposed to be a day of celebration, God. 
We remember Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem, riding on the back of a colt donkey just as the kings of old did. Today is the day we are to be anticipatory about the word of the prophets finally coming to bear, when the oppressed shall receive good news, when the brokenhearted shall have their hearts bound up, when those who are captive shall be set free and comfort to all who mourn. Today we are supposed to celebrate. But how can we celebrate when clearly the words of the prophets have not come to pass yet in fullness? Our hearts break for our siblings around the globe enduring war and violence, hunger and scarcity. We grieve for those who are enduring loss and trauma. Our hearts need binding up too as we anticipate the events of the coming week. The remembrance of the Last Supper and your capture by the authorities, the sham trial and conviction where known criminals are set free and yet you are sentenced to death on a cross. How shall we celebrate this Palm Sunday? The only way we know how, by your grace. By your grace, remind us once more that through the cross you have defeated death once and for all. By your grace, instill in our grieving hearts a sense of hope, a sense of joy, a sense of anticipation of all that is to come. Remind us once more who we are and whose we are, and of the great reconciliation that has come and is yet to come through Jesus Christ. Today we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Lord save us. Ensure and certain hope that thy kingdom will one day come, that thy will will one day be done on earth as it is in heaven. Until that day, Lord, we live and move and pray and have our very being in you, our crucified Redeemer and Lord. Hear us now as we pray in the manner that you have taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And do not let us fall into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. I'd like to invite us into a time of prayer and offering. If you've got a Connect card or financial gift to make, I encourage you to come forward and drop those in the offering plates. If you're a guest with us, please know we do not expect a financial contribution. We are just thrilled you're here with us in worship this morning. There are candle stands around the periphery of the back of the sanctuary. If you wish to go and light a candle, signifying bringing God's light into a dark place of your life or a dark place in the world. We encourage you to do that. The kneelers are up here. You can pull one out and kneel and be in prayer up front as the choir leads us in a musical offering. Let us continue in a time of offering and prayer together. Thank you. 
most holy and merciful God, all that we are and all that we have comes from you. Receive these gifts as a sign of our thanks. We give because you gave first. We love because you loved first. Make us like you in our giving and in our loving. Amen. Amen. And please join in, give me the faith which can remove in our hymnal. you to have a seat and Lauren's going to come and share a ministry moment for the day. Good morning St. John. My name is Lauren Livers and I am the current chair of the LGBTQ plus outreach team. I'm here today to share with you just a little bit about this committee and what we do. First, our vision is to foster an environment where St. John has the opportunity to welcome all of God's children into the full expression of Christ's all-inclusive love. We meet about once a month for food and fellowship and to plan ways to connect with the LGBTQ plus communities of both St. John and Anchorage. These events have included Pride Sunday held here at St. John, participation in the Anchorage Pride Parade, and Pride in the Park Strip. We've also had a community Christmas party and summer barbecue. In fact, 
Today, after the 1130 service, we will gather in the fellowship hall to put together 105 rainbow Easter baskets for youth and young adults at Covenant House and Choosing Our Roots. Anyone is welcome to come help. It's super fun, and we have lots of goodies going into these baskets. And actually, it's thanks to everyone who has donated these goodies for us to pack. If you'd like to get connected to the planning of any of these events, or if you have an idea for an event we can have, or if you'd just like to be in fellowship with this community, please come see me or Pastor Autumn, and we can get you connected. Thank you. Did you hear about the free medical and dental clinic? Perfect. I had to make sure. I didn't want to redo an announcement just in case. There is a free medical and dental clinic today through Thursday from 9 to 5 at Hillside O'Malley Adventist Church. And so if you or someone in your life needs medical or dental care, send them over there today through Thursday from 9 to 5. If you are wanting to learn more about how to listen to yourself and listen to others well while also trying to listen to God, a group soul care might be the perfect thing with you, our perfect thing for you. Our own Colleen Runty is gathering people together to dive deeper into listening um, and sharing our stories with one another, with God, and listening to where God is at work in the midst of that. And so if that piques your interest, uh, write it on your Connect card. You can contact Colleen, direct, Colleen directly or let Pastor Andy or I know and we'll get you connected with that. And last but not least, who here knows Rose? <laughs> Rose was a diagonal minister here for 25 years and it is her 80th birthday in a couple of weeks. And so we have a birthday card out in the triangle room for you to sign to wish her happy birthday and maybe you leave one of her isms out there like it's enough to make you believe in Jesus. <laughs> and with that, my friends, receive this blessing. May you go from here to believe, to pray, and to forgive so that you might bear the fruit God has intended you to bear, to go from here to love and serve our God, to love and serve our neighbor. Amen.